movie ignores the miles east this is from Barcelona because it's just Spain racist. Well, this is the most convenient tosh overboard timing ever. If this guy had slacked off on the job just 4% more, Bourne would have drowned. Stuff I don't need to see in order to believe it happened. Yeah, I'm trying to help this guy, but what the hell. I'll also open his existing healed scar just to snoop about inside his body. What are you doing? Amnesia or not, Bourne decides that the best course of action is choking the guy who needs to speak in order to give him information. What's your name? I don't know. Amnesia. Fishing boat makes a guy with bullet wounds work for his supper. You can Bourne grabs this baton, and the other guard decides not to at least try to beat Bourne's brains in. So he's got the innate amnesiac knowledge to speak German and disarm two cops, but not to avoid sleeping in the most obvious discoverable place possible? He goes on to claim that he's just survived an assassination attempt. Things you could have heard in the tape if I just let it play, but decided to stop it so I could talk about what he says in the tape. Unless you confused it for Gemeinschaft Bank Cleveland. I don't know where he rested after beating up those cops, but he should have picked that in the first place. He'd still have a jacket. Here's a visual roll credits. Handy American Embassy is here just in case you're being chased by cops at this very moment. I'm an American. Something my passport should be able to tell you, but I'll emphasize this point mainly because I like bragging about it. You! Red bag! The red bag! Guy who's just been informed that Bourne is wanted for assaulting two cops decides to make a scene in the U.S. Embassy, rather than trying to take him down quietly, which also gives Bourne some time to plot his escape. Guy with gun waits until he's in Bourne's gun-grabbing range to pull out his gun. Bourne casually checks the evacuation plan and assumes there's absolutely no guards up here ready to take him out with no room to get the proper momentum to kick the door open, Bourne succeeds, because American engineering, I guess. Also, what's up with this fire exit? Why isn't an American embassy fire exit up to code? Is this the haunted section where nobody goes, so they said f*** it when it came to safety? This bag falling to the ground reminds me that guards rarely ever seem to check the back exits of a place when it comes to chases like this. These guys taught the people in Incredible Hulk how to hunt down people, who in turn taught the Fast Five guys. This dummy doesn't see the obvious red backpack in the snow below. While I personally think this free climbing down the building scene is rad, I have always wondered why the high security US Embassy has no security cameras outside the building to catch this kind of shit. Or even him in the alley here in a minute. Icy Ledge proves no match for Jason Bourne's icy grip, as snow is just pretty to look at and causes no problems in situations like this. Marie casually walks to her car, seemingly unaware of all the commotion in the Embassy, despite the fact that she was just there a second ago. And I guess they're just letting people leave during the manhunt? They don't go on lockdown? Also, good thing she illegally parked in this alley where you clearly can't park a car, or else Bourne would have had to make his escape on foot and wouldn't have a love interest. Still nobody checking the back exits, huh? Oh, I see. The embassy itself doesn't have access to the exterior security cameras, but the CIA back in America does. Got it. Sounds dumb as shit, but I got it. Doesn't it seem strange how many white oscillating fans there are in this room? Especially since none of them are on. Wouldn't you think a room stuffy enough to require this many fans would be consistently stuffy enough for a few of them to be running? Zoom and enhance cliche. I don't like her. I want to go deep. Those are two conflicting statements. Words on screen and super conspicuous Eiffel Tower shot team up to make for damn sure you know this shit is Paris. I can tell you the license plate numbers of all six cars outside. But what I can't do is memorize an evacuation card without stealing it, or change into some different clothes, or do anything disguised as 101 when it comes to laying low. Seriously, who does that? Marie thinks she's in a horror movie where she can just be a jump-scared dick willy-nilly. Not that Marie has shown the best judgment when it comes to parking, but can you really park here? And remember, she parked it here and left Bourne in the car sleeping, and then walked to get breakfast somewhere. I mean, this is a pretty shot, but I don't think this is where you want to be when you're trying to avoid conflict. Hey look, girl fight! I wonder if Universal was pissed about a Sony movie getting into their shot. Either that or it's product placement for a movie that came out in 2000 in a movie that came out in 2002. Are you sure this is all yours? The guy just paid you 20000 to come here. I'm guessing yes? Okay, so she either took the toothbrush that was already in here, which, ew, or she carries around a toothbrush at all times. She didn't bring her bag or anything with her, so how bizarre. Something wrong? Wait a minute, was this guy here the whole time? If so, what the hell is he crashing through windows for? And if he just arrived, where the hell did he come from? They're up several flights of stairs, so did he scale the building or get on the roof? There is no way professional killers do business like this. Bourne disarms the guy of his gun, but somehow this dude doesn't have another gun, and now he's f***ed. <laughs> Oh good, a knife. What did you pack in that backpack you have? Snacks? Where's the pistol, man? Ah! Oh, that was amazing! Two sins off for that badassery right there. I don't know how he managed to get up under his own power since Bourne broke one of his legs, but oh well. One less bad guy, I guess. Okay, sure, he killed the landlady, but how did he get in? And why did he then concoct that stupid plan to crash into Bourne's apartment? There's a body in the streets. So? There's police! This is Paris! Alright, put up the scanners. How did Conklin rise to boss level while being this stupid? Well, someone didn't see Get Shorty. 
How does this guy not realize he's going to be caught on camera entering or being in this public train station? Last chance, Murray. Murray risks her life and decides to stay with the obvious amnesiac assassin because the power of Borners is stronger. Well, it's a good thing the cops decided to park their car far away from the suspicious vehicle and simply walk over, instead of speeding over to it and trapping them in. Born as addicted to Parisians. Whoa, you would not see a billboard like this in America. So this sin is for America. Also, 3615 come. Uh, we got a bump coming up. This is a distant cousin to the pronoun game, the totally undersell the imminent danger for comedy's sake game. All the alleys and stairways in Paris just happen to be mini Mayfair size so that this chase can happen. Mini sales today, which I understand to be solid, basically owe that growth to this movie and the Italian job. This car has been made out to be a clunker. The fact that nothing breaks to the point of incapacitating it during this chase, and none of the bumps and crashes matter either, is miraculous. Also, Paris only has seven cops. Did he bother to take the time to honk at that guy he's already swerved to avoid? The other car was clearly oblivious to Bourne's car, so that guy didn't do the honking. Movie unintentionally inspires a traffic car chase scene in Matrix Reloaded that was definitely not all that great. Movie cuts from a shot that has no yellow van in existence to Bourne using a sudden yellow van as a cop obstacle. Or copstacle. The phone booth door isn't even nearly open before the car speeds through. But in the next shot, this dumbass who clearly saw a car heading this way found a way to open it just in time for the excitement of smashing glass. Bring your kids to the morgue day! Distracted driving. This girl can't dye her own hair, apparently. Whatever, as long as they bone, I'll take any flimsy excuse the movie can muster. Also, interesting that they chose the doggy style formation for hair dye application, instead of any of the traditional non-sexual hair dye application positionings. Wow, if the barbering is gonna be this rough, imagine what the sex will be like. Jeez, man, does your dick have amnesia too? Jason Porn. Hey. It's at times like this that I say to myself, they definitely didn't use condoms. Did they just wing it and hope for no consequences? I wiped the We'll place down for fingerprints. But if they decide to use a black light in this place, it's definitely going to give us away. Hey, everyone, Eiffel Tower again. Remember where we are? Now, back to the action. If they want to kill me, they better kill me the first time. Foreshad irony. What kind of war we are fighting? But that is precise. Okay, a couple things here. First off, the guy behind Wombosi is completely gone now. And second off, the professor was able to properly aim and kill Wombosi in the split second he appeared in the window. Sure, the cigarette smoking man was able to tell the professor he was coming down the stairs, but how did he time and aim that shot? He doesn't even have a great view. I can see more reflection than I can see inside the building. I need distances. No one will be seated during the Ocean's Eleven portion of the movie. I also need a head cap. Basically, I need you to become a super agent like I am in like five minutes. F***ing movie has the balls to show a Paris establishing shot that does not contain the Eiffel Tower. The nerve. So I'm Kane. Hey, I just had they, a meeting as Kane. They Go said... Down. Person with obvious important information is constantly interrupted by condescending douchebag cliche. It says that he chased the man off the boat and shot him twice in the back. And then the man somehow survived all that blood loss, was unconscious for hours, floating in the water, and never died because born. Seriously, almost all law enforcement in this movie decides that surprise is not an option when trying to take down a lethal assassin. Let's just camp in front of the hotel. This, this is blown. She has already seen her picture alongside his on a wanted sheet. So why is this moment some kind of epiphany for her again? Boy, great police work, really brilliant. Conklin would be amazing at cinema sense. Beg, borrow, hack, tap, bypass. I don't care what you do. Patriot Act. Born is addicted to Marie's friend's door and has no patience whatsoever. The coincidental timing of Born and Marie and the dude who owns the house is inconceivable. It's inconceivable coincidence. There's a really good reason for this. Well, that bloody well better be. She never tells him the reason. Cute scene of this asset Batmaning her, but all movie long they've been sending information and orders to this prick by cell phone. So why they need to bring ink and paper into this now? Look, I know they came here to hide out, but surely he knows that this place is on the grid. Why he hasn't already left with or without her is amazing to me. In fact, knowing what we find out later about how he's got a soft spot for kids, it's ridiculous he's even agreed to stay here. Who? Oh, bloody dogs gone missing. The professor killed the dog, presumably because he too doesn't believe in surprising Bourne. I mean, did everyone in this movie forget he's a trained, amazingly intuitive assassin? Bourne just assumes the assassin outside is not on this side of the house he exits. Thankfully, he's right, but Jesus. Man, I thought one of the virtues of being a cold-blooded sniper was patience. This guy has zero patience and decides to completely expose himself in the middle of a field instead of laying low. You gotta get out, you gotta start running. Hasn't Lola done enough of that already? Just once I'd like to see the redial thing call the bad guy's mom, or sister, or Domino's Pizza. Okay, great, he's got a good vantage point where he can't be seen, but we're talking about top CIA operatives here. Don't you think they'd narrow down the possible places where he can see the bridge and still find him anyway? Boy, for a super agent, Bourne sure depends on a lot of other super agents to be terrible at their jobs. God damn it! Every f***ing one of these cars has an alarm. Bourne finds a way to shut off power inside the building without shutting off power or alerting the guards outside the building. You hear me? You failed! This is exactly what my college girlfriend said to me on our first night together in bed. You're the one who picked the yacht as a goddamn strike point! Bourne suddenly remembers the important information about the assassination attempt because Conklin yells at him. 
and we're at the end of the movie. For some reason, Bourne didn't take the shot here, instead waiting until he got against head range so he could see Wombosi's kids and feel guilty. Also, how in the flying f did he not know about his family? Even before the amnesia, Bourne was an assassin with heart, which helps us root for him, but makes him a terrible assassin, if we're being honest. There are a few guys here to kill Bourne, but they will only attack one by one, because each of them have a confidence in each other's individual skills that I personally do not. Okay, so this is kinda cool, but completely unnecessary. And besides, human shield does not work when it comes to gravity. I'm sorry to say, but he survives this. We're supposed to believe Nikki is about to kill Bourne, but it's Conklin, who is limping around the streets for some reason instead of staying put in a hotel room. I guess he'd be dead anyway, but cool surprise, yo. This your store? Yeah. Marie doesn't recognize the obvious Matt Damon voice. How did he find her anyway? He has no resources because he has to lay low. So did he just find this place in a phone book? Marie's Scooter Emporium? Ask for Marie, she's wanted by the CIA, so drop on in, you hear? thought it'd be better to be a fake somebody than a real nobody. Just five days into the king crab season, captains already have their sights on the next fishery. Tommy, how's the peeping? Madam Lestrange, would you mind presenting your wand? And why should I do that? It's the bank's policy. Do you know how easy this is for me? Do you have any fucking idea how easy this is? This is a fucking joke. And I'm sorry you can't do this. I really am because I wouldn't have to fucking sit here and watch you fumble around and fuck it up. There are these butterflies in Central America. They're blue and orange and yellow, and they have poison in their wings. Just enough poison to stop a bird heart. But the birds know this somehow, so they don't eat them. I will not sit back and watch my only son become a Jesus, what is it with you? 